Welcome, Bridgeport Park Middle School families, uh, to our hybrid opening presentation. This slideshow presentation has embedded videos along the way to help describe some of the information within it. We hope you find it helpful as we return to hybrid learning on Monday, October 5th. It has always been our goal to provide the best, best possible education to all students during this global pandemic uh, while considering the health and safety of students and staff. All of our decisions throughout this process have uh, been with this goal in mind. In preparing for this school year, whether we were in remote, uh, emergency remote last school year, uh, or returning to hybrid, our goal was always to be able to transition between different settings uh, with as minimal disruption as possible while still adhering to the guidelines of uh, health professionals on how to safely open and conduct school. The option to go hybrid uh, was come about because it provides some advantages to us. It helps us to provide the safest environment possible while still getting uh, groups of kids into the building for face-to-face -face instruction. We've received a number of questions about the difference between our TBLA students and students attending school in the hybrid model. So I'll try to explain the differences uh, using the bullet points below as well as this description. Our TVLA students never enter uh, the school building while um, attending uh, school through our TVLA or Titan Virtual Learning Academy. Our fifth grade TVLA students are pulled from their current uh, classes and teachers and are taught remotely uh, by a dedicated TVLA teacher. That teacher is responsible for all of our fifth grade students who are working uh, remotely in TVLA. Our TVLA students in grades six, seven, and eight remain with their current teachers. They access the class, the content, and the lessons remotely from home through Blackboard Collaborate and through the Blackboard platform. Our hybrid students in grades five through eight come to school two days, blue or orange, and stay home for two days, blue or orange days. In grades six through eight, our TVLA students act as if they are hybrid students always uh, working remotely. They stay with those students uh, and those teachers that they're currently assigned to in remote learning uh, and only access the classroom as the remote students do uh, through Blackboard from home. I hope this helps clarify some differences between TVLA and hybrid students. Below is an image that outlines our hybrid schedule. Students A through L come to school on blue days. Student M through Z come to school on orange days. Fridays remain um, asynchronous days where students will meet with their Titan team and be provided any enrichment and or intervention that is necessary. While at home during hybrid instru instruction, the day they're not scheduled, the two days they're not scheduled to come to school, they will be accessing the classroom via Blackboard and interacting with teacher and the curriculum during that time. Some of that time may be live synchronous instruction. Some of it may be activities and uh, assignments that are asynchronous and they would be working offline at times as well. Part of 
Part of returning to face-to-face -face instruction in a hybrid format is the requirement to wear face coverings. All students who enter the building, uh, actually all students who even get on the bus, must have a mask on uh, during the day. Students uh, who struggle with wearing a mask or do not want to wear a mask uh, can always take advantage of our TBLA option as well. Further in this presentation, we'll talk about the opportunity for students to have breaks from mask wearing. A hybrid model allows us to maximize our physical distancing. It will be our goal, when at all possible, to keep st students apart uh, by six feet or more in the classrooms, hallways, and other areas. Self-assessing for symptoms will be very important for our students, families, and staff members. Please take a look at this slide and the next slide to see what symptoms would require you to stay home from school and for what duration. Cleaning and sanitizing of surfaces and rooms will be very important as we move to hybrid instruction. Our custodial staff uh, will be working hard throughout the day to clean high touch, high traffic surfaces. And teachers and students will be working together to clean uh, rooms and desks between cohorts of students. Teachers will be working with students to encourage hand washing, hand disinfecting, we are also not allowing visitors into the building uh, to limit exposure. And students will not be using lockers until further notice. This will help eliminate congestion uh, in the hallway and increase social distancing. And all of our water fountains uh, have been shut down uh, until further notice as well. We're encouraging students to carry and bring with them a water bottle uh, for hydration throughout. We have opened an additional clinic that we're calling Clinic B in the building. Clinic B will serve as the destination and treatment of students who display any uh, COVID-19 uh, symptoms. The clinic nurse in Clinic B will be working with parents, communicating with them to have their children picked up and what the next steps are uh, based on their interaction with that child. So those students will be separated from the other clinics and will uh, be uh, quarantined away from other students until they are picked up. We have been and will continue to work closely with the Cuyahoga County Board of Health. Uh, should we have a lab confirmed positive cases in our building, as well as determining our best practices throughout the building uh, as we transition to hybrid. As students return, it'll be important for us to be able to contact Trace should we have a lab confirmed positive case of COVID-19. This is why our seating charts throughout the building are a priority. We will take the steps of determining which students were primary and secondary contacts with students uh, who or staff members who have confirmed cases of COVID-19. Communication of two families and to the Board of Health will follow, as well as instructions as to uh, quarantining or seclusion based on their level of contact with the infected person. Students taking advantage of transportation uh, will be social distanced within the bus as well. It is the district goal to have only one child uh, per seat. 
The driver and all students on the bus must wear a mask. Sanitation will occur between a.m. and p.m. routes, and we are also providing hand sanitizer on the school bus. Arrival procedures uh, for students have changed a bit this year. We have added an additional drop-off spot for families. Students arriving by car may be dropped off at our main entrance. That's the long loop off of Paula Drive. They may also be dropped off at the auditorium entrance, which is a loop around the parking lot uh, off of Paula Drive. And then the third spot is at the fifth grade entrance off of Middlebrook. Students can be dropped off there as well. It's obviously an advantage to if you have a fifth grader to drop off at the fifth grade entrance. Please be aware that Middlebrook is uh, one way traffic during construction here to start the year. All students will not be permitted into the building until 745 a.m. Please plan your drop off at this time uh, so that your child does not have to wait outside of the building. This year, Berea Mid Park Middle School will have three parent drop-off locations. This is the first one, also our main entrance. Buses do not come in here. This is just for cars. Parents can choose whichever entrance they wish and can do different ones in the morning and afternoon at their pleasure. This one comes up to the main office. It's near the flagpole. And we would ask that parents stop anywhere along this curve so that we can keep maximum car movement. Pull up to the curb anywhere along here, stop, let your students out. Your students will then walk up and enter into this main office door on the right. In the afternoon, students will come out of that door and will also come out of the media center door right there to come to this loop to be picked up by their parents for those who choose to drive. And then you would just follow this loop around back to follow drive and then turn left or right, whichever is your need based on your home location. As you approach for Mid Park Middle School on Paula Drive, there's a new parent drop-off, but we don't want to confuse you with the bus drop-off. So the first thing you will pass here on the right is the bus drop-off. Please do not go in where it says buses only but in turn come to this next driveway, which in the past has been used for our handicapped students' buses, but for this year will be a second parent drop-off. You'll pull right in here on the curb and right up here towards the sign that says food pantry or the sports center. And while there is a door here at the sports center, it will not be open in the morning but parents can park anywhere along this curb in the afternoon to pick up their children or stop anywhere on this curb right here to drop them off and students would then enter here into the auditorium entrance. Students then would come out of the auditorium entrance or the sports center entrance to the same location for parent pickup and then this area in front of us, which does look like a driveway, will be blocked by cones. So parents would then turn left and go back through the parking lot to exit the same place where they entered. We are approaching Middlebrook Boulevard. It is late September in 2020. And as you can see, there's significant construction going on. When we get up to the fifth grade wing, you will see that it is blocked, but eventually this part of the road will be clear. And if you are going to the fifth grade wing for a student drop off or a student pickup in the afternoon, this would be the route that you will go. As you come up Middlebrook, you can see the school signs. and we will see the driveway in just a few moments. As you approach the school here, it would be on the right-hand side. And as you can see on this date, 
Uh, there is no road there, but once that's completed, you would go right up there and up to the fifth grade wing, which is on the right. But when it is open, you would arrive at the fifth grade wing this way, and we would encourage only parents of fifth grade students to use this uh, entrance. You can pull anywhere here in this striped, no parking drop off area for the purpose of dropping off. And then fifth grade students would enter right here in this door. If you have a fifth grader and a sixth, seventh or eighth grader, they can also be dropped off here. And after they get out, then they would walk across this sidewalk in the direction of the main building. So that way you can do it in one stop. And then you'll approach the stop sign right here, make a left turn, heading back towards Middlebrook Boulevard, and you would be on your way based on the construction traffic. Bus riders will be dropped off here in the back of the building. Fifth and sixth grade students would enter into door H. Then seventh and eighth grade students would enter into any of these other three doors that you see here on their way to class. Around the corner from door G is the door that would go to the cafeteria and in our pre-COVID days, students would go to the cafeteria and wait in the cafeteria for the dismissal bell to ring to go to first period. Procedures are a little bit different these days and will be described by Mr. Desenza in his orientation videos. Buses will not be arriving in the morning until 7.45 a.m. Students will be released from the buses at 7.45 and all students, uh, car riders and bus riders, will, end, will enter the building and report directly to their first period class. The only exception to this are students who have ordered uh, online for breakfast. They would report to their grade level cafeteria to receive their breakfast, eat, and then report to first period. Dismissal will also look a little bit different this year. We will use the same three drop-off locations as parent pickup locations. You can pick up your child by car or vehicle at the main entrance off of Paula Drive, the auditorium exit off of Paula Drive as well in front of the uh, staff parking lot. And you can also pick up your child at the fifth grade entrance off of Middlebrook. Students will begin to be uh, dismissed from school at three o'clock. We're gonna stagger our dismissals, allowing our first wave of bus riders to leave first, followed by car riders and walkers, and then two more waves of bus dismissals after that. This all with the goal of reducing uh, student interaction and congregation. This is a map of the building. It shows you the locations of uh, four different entrances into the building. I'll start with the red arrow. This is an entrance for buses only. This is the entrance that our buses will use uh, and exit through uh, at the beginning and end of each day. The blue arrow uh, shows you the entrance where you would uh, enter in order to drop your child off at the auditorium entrance. The yellow arrow uh, is the entrance to the main office uh, entrance. You would use that loop if you chose to drop your child off at that entrance. And then finally, uh, the purple arrow indicates the uh, driveway off of Middlebrook, which will allow you to drop your child off at the fifth grade doors. Between classes, students have four minutes to get to their next class. Students are not going to be permitted to use lockers until further notice, so there's no need to stop at lockers between classes. Students will be carrying their book bags, uh, book bags with them from class to class. Students will also not be permitted to use the restroom between classes. This is in an effort to reduce uh, congregation 
uh, and maximize social distancing uh, in a time uh, that is a little less structured than others in the building. An advantage to our hybrid schedule is that there is minimal change or disruption to student schedules, although there will be some. So we are urging everybody to check Infinite Campus regularly and to please make sure to check by 3 o'clock p.m. on Thursday for the most accurate uh, schedule for your students. Some changes needed to occur in order to maximize social distancing within classrooms and make sure that on given hybrid day, not too many students were present in a classroom. We also uh, adjusted various fifth grade student schedules uh, based on our TVLA delivery model in the fifth grade. A number of our uh, students and a couple of our staff members were pulled out of the physical building in order to uh, join our Titan Virtual Learning Academy. This required some shifting of our teams and teachers and student assignments. So please make sure to check Infinite Campus on Thursday by three o'clock, especially fifth graders planning to attend the fifth grade sneak peek that evening. Another change we made uh, is in regard to our fifth and sixth grade specials classes. Those schedules, uh, those classes were originally scheduled to meet Mondays and Wednesdays or Thursdays and Fridays. The problem with hybrid and those schedules is that some of you would never uh, meet your teacher in person physically in the building. We've adjusted our Monday, Wednesday classes to be held Mondays and Tuesdays, and we've changed our Tuesday, Thursday classes to meet Wednesdays and Thursdays. This will allow our fifth and sixth grade students to meet in person with each of their specials teachers once per week. All of these changes should be visible in Infinite Campus. The following two slides are our bell schedules. Uh, fifth grade block schedule is visible on this slide and our sixth through eighth grade schedule is visible on the next slide. Let's talk a little bit about what class time will look like now. Uh, we, it's gonna be very important for us to have assigned seating in all classrooms and in all areas. Those. Uh, assigned seats will be strictly enforced. This allows us to contact Trace should we uh, receive a lab confirmed positive case. Uh, we're encouraging all uh, students uh, and families to encourage their students to make sure they bring their Chromebook daily, make sure that that Chromebook is charged and ready for use during the day, and to also pack their charger in their backpack. Uh, should their Chromebook lose its charge or need charging during the school day. Student lunches will occur in the cafeterias with social distancing. It's important for us to have assigned seats in the cafeteria to start the year. We'll allow students to choose where they're seated and eventually after a few days we will a formalized a seating chart in the cafeteria to make sure we know which student is sitting where each day should we need to contact Trace. Students taking advantage of our school lunches will need to order online following the district uh, lunch procedures. Um, those students packing can pack their lunch and house it in their book bag during the day uh, those who are receiving the school lunch uh, will come to lunch and pick up their lunch in designated areas throughout the cafeteria. We understand that mask breaks are an important part of us bringing students back to school as well. We're encouraging mask breaks in all classes. Uh, mask breaks are at the discretion and comfort level of the teacher. Uh, however, during uh, 
um, times of good weather or encouraging teachers to take students outside to conduct mass breaks. We do have protocols and guidelines for staff to use for mask breaks and ask that everyone adhere to those guidelines that will be taught to your children. Attendance can be a little bit tricky when we're in the remote or hybrid setting. It's important for us to try to capture which students are obviously here in person, uh, but also those students who are engaged uh, at home as well. If you have a planned absence and know your child will not be coming to school or participating in any online um, sessions, please contact the attendance line and let us know uh, so we can excuse that absence. If you have an unplanned absence, uh, have an issue with your internet connectivity, uh, a session link, or some other uh, form of technical difficulty or a situation in your family that uh, happens uh, spontaneously, uh, it's also important to communicate that uh, to the school. Uh, in those cases, when you are able to get back online and complete the work but may have missed just a short, short portion of the day, please contact your child's teacher via email and let them know what difficulty you had and that the work was completed so the child can be marked present. Uh, if you're unable to reach out to your child's teacher or get the work done based on a unplanned, unforeseen um, absence from the virtual setting, please contact the attendance line and let us know so that we can convert those absences uh, into excused absence. Just a couple of reminders. We are encouraging students to bring water bottles with them throughout the day as our water fountains are shut down. Uh, we are asking students to wash hands and sanitize their hands on a regular basis. And we're also asking that students bring daily to school headphones or earbuds uh, that will help them to uh, interact with some of the um, learning online or communicate with students who are at home. As a way to help our fifth grade students transition, we are holding a fifth grade sneak peek evening. This That's this Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, it is an opportunity for students to walk the fifth grade hallways uh, check out where their core content area classes are located uh, and talk with families uh, about their plans for arrival, dismissal, and pickup at the end of the day. Again, that's from 4 to 7 this Thursday. Uh, more information and details are available uh, if you click the link. We're asking that only one adult accompany the child who is transitioning into uh, fifth grade in person. Communication is very important to us here at the middle school. Uh, here are some ways to stay connected to what's going on in the building. Uh, but most importantly, every Sunday night at 6, you will be receiving a weekly update via email. If you are not receiving those updates, please make sure you check Infinite Campus and your primary email address to be sure that it is uh, an email address that you are checking frequently. We have an am amazing PTA here at the middle school. Please consider getting involved uh, in, or at the very least joining PTA and helping support all of the wonderful things they do throughout the year. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you found this um, presentation helpful. 
uh, as your child transitions to hybrid instruction. There is a link here. If you have any questions still after this presentation, uh, we'll work to answer those questions in some sort of FAQ uh, or directly with you uh, if it pertains to uh, only your child. Thank you and have a great day.